Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're plunging into the winter forecast, uh, specifically looking at the stratospheric polar vortex. Right. The core puzzle we're trying to solve for you is this. Why is the polar vortex forecast to actually get stronger in January, but at the same time, we're expecting frigid air to come roaring back? And that paradox, it, it really goes back to how this winter started. We saw an absolutely giant event in late November. The SSW. The sudden stratospheric warming, yeah. And it was one of the earliest, most aggressive ones we have on modern record. I mean, the source material says it's a real outlier, only four like it in the last 70 years. And when you say aggressive, you mean truly dramatic changes happening way up there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, think about it. The stratosphere miles above us suddenly saw temperatures surge by 50 degrees Celsius. 50. Oh. At the 10 hectopascal level, where the vortex is supposed to be this, you know, perfect spinning top, that heat just shattered it. And that shattering, that's what triggered the Polar Express pattern, right? Mm -hmm. I remember seeing Calgary's temperature just tanking over 30 degrees in a single day. Exactly. That's the kind of volatility we're talking about. Okay, so let's unpack this recovery. Because normally, a strong vortex means the cold air stays locked up north. Well, the recovery phase itself is just physics, really. You have radiational cooling over the polar night, and that naturally tries to rebuild the vortex wall, make it more compact, more circular. That's the temporary reset. But wait, if it's sealing itself back up, shouldn't that mean we get a mild January? How does the cold get out while it's strengthening? That is the crucial insight here. Because the SSW is so extreme, it already flooded the lower atmosphere with all this displaced cold air. Ah, uh, I see. So when the vortex reorganizes after that mess, it doesn't just pull the cold back up. Instead, it starts to funnel and organize the cold that's already spilled out. It creates this uh, really organized cold corridor across North America. So it's trapping the cold anomaly down here with us, not letting it dissipate. You've got it. It's channeling it. Which means... Those organized cold surges for the eastern two-thirds of the U.S. and the Canadian prairies. But what about the contrast? What's happening out west? The pattern pretty much splits the continent in two. While the east is freezing, the west coast, especially northern and central California, is still dealing with atmospheric rivers. So more rain for them? A lot more. The models show that enhanced moisture delivery continues right through at least the first half of January. Okay, so that's the story for North America. How does this translate across the Atlantic over to Europe? Europe is, well, it's a lot more volatile. Eastern Europe and Scandinavia, they look colder than normal. There's a high risk of that colder east wind pattern setting up, pulling air right out of Russia. And then there's that fascinating snow paradox for Central Europe. You have cold air, but uh, less snow than normal is expected. Why the dry cold? It comes down to two things, moisture supply and the ocean. There are these prevailing dry patterns sitting north of the main storm track. And on top of that, the North Atlantic is anomalously warm and it acts like a thermal barrier. Limiting the sustained freeze needed for heavy snow. Exactly. So we have this intense cold pulse, but the stratospheric repair job itself seems temporary. How unstable is this January recovery? It's definitely on shaky ground. The risk of a second SSW event is uh, significantly above normal. And what's driving that risk? It's driven by these large-scale forces, what we call teleconnections. Two big ones stand out. First, the quasi-biennial oscillation is in an easterly phase. And that's the wind pattern high over the equator. Right. And that easterly phase historically boosts the risk of an SSW by about 30%. And the second factor? The quick transition from a weak La Nina back toward neutral conditions. There's a 63% chance of that by early spring. All these big climate drivers are lining up to poke holes in that rebuilt vortex wall. So the big picture is that this January strengthening is really just a reorganization. The Arctic gates, so to speak, are gonna stay unlocked for a lot of the winter. That's a great way to put it. And the sources also mention the lack of Arctic sea ice, especially in the Barents Kara Sea. Thinner ice means less thermal insulation, and paradoxically, that amplifies high pressure ridging, which is exactly what weakens the vortex wall and makes this whole reset so vulnerable. That's an incredible feedback loop, something for you to mull over. Yeah. The state of the ice, thousands of miles away, is already working to undermine this temporary reset before it even fully locks in. The surface is feeding right back into the global pattern.